Good morning. I'm uh, Dr. Mike Montopoli from the OSHA Office of Occupational Medicine. And I'd like to welcome you to a special program in honor of Dr. Alice Hamilton on the occasion of her 125th anniversary of her birth. Uh, this program is being videotaped in order to uh, share it with folks in the regions and other places, uh, people who could not be here to today. And I'll mention right at the outset that the not appearing on today's program are Tanya Harding and Nancy Kerrigan. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Dr. Hamilton was born in 1869 to an upper middle class family in Fort Wayne, Indiana. She elected to devote her life to medicine, in particular to the emerging field of occupational medicine, to which she brought the legitimacy and lifelong commitment. Early in her career, she witnessed the suffering of immigrant workers during her time with, Alice, with uh, Jane Addams at Hull House in Chicago. She became the first woman faculty member at Harvard University at a time when the Harvard Medical School did not even admit women. She was a pioneering industrial toxicologist and author of a classic textbook in the field. She was an articulate proponent of social reform both within and outside of the workplace. This extraordinary woman died in 1970 at age 101 having been a key figure during some of the most formative years in American history. Dr. Hamilton's life and work provide inspiration to many occupational safety and health professionals, including myself. I chose to pursue a career in this field before I knew of Dr. Hamilton, yet the more I, I learn about her, the more I'm inspired by her very simple and practical approach to problem solving. Uh, when, I, when I'm confronted with a particularly thorny issue, I often ask myself, well, what would Alice Hamilton have done. Uh, she saw her work not so much as an end in itself, but as a means to effect social change. She gathered data and she published papers and reports, as many of us do, but not necessarily to enhance her professional standing, but to highlight a, a, an occupational health problem and to thereby improve the lot of workers. We can all do well to learn about Dr. Hamilton. To be, uh, I think it's uh, uh, remarkable that uh, she died, as the, as the tape mentioned, just three months before the enactment of the Occupational Safety and Health Act. It's remarkable in a way, but it's, it's really no coincidence. Dr. Hamilton's work made occupational safety and health a national priority. Without the landmark studies referred to in this film, uh, it is debatable whether the OSHA Act would have come into existence when it did. In a real sense, those of us who work now for OSHA are continuing the work of Alice Hamilton for the department and for the workers of the United States. Directing the work of the agency today is Joe Deere, the Assistant Secretary of Labor for, for Occupational Safety and Health, uh, a post he has held since November of last year. Mr. Deere came to OSHA from the state of Washington where he directed the Department of Labor and Industries from 1987 until 1993. He was credited with implementing an innovative and effective reform of the workers' compensation program in the state. He also started health care cost containment and quality assurance programs in the state. In 1992, the department's workers' compensation program received the Innovations in State and Local Government Award from the Ford Foundation and Harvard University. Mr. Deere was president of the National Association of Governmental Labor, Labor Officials in 1990 and 91 and served on the board of directors of the Occupational Safety and Health State Plan Association from 1989 until 93. As director of the State Department of Labor and Industries, he served as state designee for Washington State's Occupational Safety and Health Program. Mr. Deere holds a bachelor's degree uh, in political economy from the Evergreen State College. He is a graduate of Harvard University Program for Senior Executives. And he will discuss this morning Alice Hamilton and occupational safety and health. Joe. I want to salute everybody who took time uh, away from work or who has an opportunity to listen to this uh, to consider the larger picture. Uh, we often get so wrapped up in our work uh, we forget uh, the work of pioneers like Dr. Alice Hamilton, and I think it's, uh, I commend the staff who originated uh, this idea and put this, this program on. I think it's entirely appropriate to commemorate the life of Alice Hamilton. 
her work for the State of Illinois, the Federal Bureau of Labor Statistics, and the U.S. Department of Labor laid the groundwork for activity and occupational safety and health at both the state and federal levels. I don't think it's an overstatement at all to say she helped invent occupational safety and health. Uh, her accomplishments are numerous. You heard a bit about them already, and you'll hear about them in some detail uh, in a few moments. Uh, but she undertook studies of lead in Illinois, uh, documented severe problems, in that industry, those documentations helped produce statutory changes in the state of Illinois uh, very early on. Uh, she, addressed, uh, ha she addressed hazards such as arsenic, uh, problems in brass manufacturing, zinc smelting, carbon monoxide, cyanide, turpentine, noise, case and disease, and decompression sickness. Uh, she authored a series of reports uh, for the Bureau of Labor Statistics before it was part of the Department of Labor and then as it became a part Department of Labor. She described her investigations as voyages of exploration, which I think is a fascinating statement for a, a scientist uh, to make. Uh, one who was concerned with the practical application of knowledge in order to make a difference for ordinary working people. She not only presented her work to the government, she presented it to employers, and her autobiography is, uh, has numerous examples, heartening examples, I think, of how the presentation of information to business owners were, in many cases, able to persuade them to make changes in the conditions that they did. However, we also know that sometimes the facts alone are not enough uh, to persuade uh, business managers to do what they need, and other tools have come into play since then. Uh, but the degree to which we can have knowledge move people to voluntary compliance is something that we need to take advantage of as much as we can. She came to the Department of Labor under Frances Perkins in 1935 to do her last major study uh, in the rayon industry, uh, and there again helped produce information which documented a problem and gave a guide to policymakers or what actions to take. Uh, I'm struck by what a pioneer Alice Hamilton was as a woman, as a scientist, as a social activist, uh, an inventor of occupational safety and health in our nation. We can read and hear about her work and be appalled at the conditions which existed at the time she worked. Uh, and we can be proud of the example she set in combining science and policy to have them converge to produce real improvements in the conditions that men and women face at work. We can learn from her work and example, and we ought to, because despite the progress that's occurred in this century, there are still conditions of work for too many workers which are completely unsatisfactory. Indeed, there are signs today of real deterioration, the reemergence of tuberculosis in the workplace being one of the most visible uh, indicators, the explosion of musculoskeletal disorders that are being documented more and more. So we might ask ourselves, if Alice Hamilton were here today, what would she ask us? Since she helped invent occupational safety and health, how would she have us reinvent occupational safety and health? If we could hear her voice, what would she ask? What should we do? Thanks very much for inviting me to be part of this program today.